Good morning, Pelham Road. Well, get ready to rock and roll a little bit because the sister act is here. Yeah, you did. They did do that, didn't they? <laughs> I will follow him by Sister Act. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg, uh, that was back before she did, what is she on now? Like, uh, I think she does The View or something like that. Anyway, um, I wanted to tell you about, um, you know, each day I try to bring you something like Instagram or something that we're doing at the church or something that you can find some inspiration in. This is called Painted Peace. Uh, we have a peace pole at the church, and uh, it is well made. It's a nice peace pole, and she has went into making a lot of things for home and garden. Her name is Stephanie Burgess, called Painted Peace. Go check it out. I think if you just typed in Painted Peace, Stephanie Burgess, you could find her work. Very interesting yard art, if you're like me and love garden yard art. All right. Uh, in the comment section below today, the question is this. One food you cannot live without. I know mine's broccoli. But just one food that you can't live without. All right. The effects of COVID-19 on the church is a bit of a paradox. My neighbor just cranked up his uh, weed eater, by the way. Uh, the effects of COVID-19 on the church is a paradox. On one hand, our communities are less physical, less incarnate. And remember that incarnate means to be made manifest, most often sort of in a body presence. So the simplest of actions, like a hug or a handshake or sharing coffee with a friend or even gathered worship, have been put on hold. Pastors actually now preach to empty buildings. The faithful participate at their own homes whenever they want to and they don't have to participate with anybody else. The profound physicality of holding the cup of Christ or holding the body of Christ is now absent from our worship. But on the other hand, our communities are more physical and more incarnate in the strangest ways. I spend more time in my micro community of spouse and neighbors than I ever have. I mean, and when we gather at the picnic tables on Wednesday, there is this feeling of communion because we've gathered outside for lunch and we miss each other dearly and there is just something special in the air. And if you haven't joined us on Wednesdays for a socially distanced lunch around the picnic tables, come and join us. In our technological age, distance has changed, but not stopped inspiration and reflection. But has distance changed the vital part of church that we call fellowship? I actually don't know yet. I'm still sort of sorting that one out. In an age in which so many are drifting or storming away from the church, what will the experience of the absence of gathered fellowship, spirited worship, and common mission do to us? You know, on the bright side, we may be learning a new paradigm to follow God tethered to the church, but not tethered to the building. We may be more able to demand Christian justice and mercy in the world. We may take the gospel actually into the streets, and that would be a good thing. Or it could be that the virtues that shaped us, this is on the other hand, it could be that the virtues that shaped us because of gathering together are beginning to be lost even replaced by less gospel-centered virtues. And in time, less virtue means less practice. And less practice, well, that means we drift from what we needed the most. I mean, having a piano does not mean you will practice the piano. But not having a piano certainly means you're not going to practice the piano. See you tomorrow.